Hey guys, The Drawing here, and welcome back to another Clash Royale video. Now, Aaron has done it again. He's pushed to top 32 in the entire world with the free to play 2.9 mortar cycle deck. This guy is absolutely insane, and today we're going to showcase some of the replays that got him to this coveted 8200 trophy mark. Huge thanks to Aaron for sharing these replays today. Again, links to his YouTube channel are down below. Please go and show him some support. And hey, while you're there, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Also, if you'd like to support me, feel free to use code LEGENDARAY in the clash royale shop any support would be greatly appreciated and with all of that out of the way let's get right into some matches Alrighty, so this first match here today is going to be against lopkins who is you know one of the more well-known pros in the clash royale community and he's gonna be running a splash yard deck now basically whether or not you're gonna win a splash yard deck uh, depends on a few factors. First off is whether or not you can get a King Tower activation. And most Splasher decks that have a Goblin Cage uh, make the job slightly easier. And you can see here, he's going to go ahead and try and bait out the opponent to spend a little bit more Elixir. And you can see here, the opponent spends a Barb Barrel, meaning that that Goblin Cage is going to survive and get that King Tower activation. So there we go. Step one out of the way. The, now it's going to be way easier to defend the graveyards that the opponent is going to be sending. Now, Lapakati or La Hopkins goes in with a baby dragon in the back and he goes ahead and immediately he just goes in with a graveyard as well and you can see here Aaron is way more aggressive than I normally am with the mortar he actually natives the baby dragon back um, to make sure that those skeletons don't start building up it's very important against the graveyards that they don't successfully get a tank to tank for those skeletons otherwise the graveyard's gonna be 10 times more deadly anyways though the opponent has a lot of ways to deal with the mortar so this even though we already have a king activation it's still going to be a relatively difficult matchup to win because there are so many cheap mini tanks that are so difficult for the mortar to actually break through and on the other hand the graveyard player can get consistent chip damage with the graveyard since it's very difficult to actually fully stop a graveyard and you can see here i mean yeah, we just completely- that, that mortar gets completely destroyed, and we once again have to just try and defend here. Log cycle to get chip damage, of course, that's very, very important, that you're always going for chip damage on the opponent's tower. And, um, yeah, as you can see, now again, we're just consistently continuing to cycle our cards and going in with mortar on offense. Again, he's playing this very, very aggressively. I never play this matchup that aggressively. Maybe that's why I lose these matchups. But, uh, with 60 seconds left going into double elixir time, um, as you can see, it's forcing Lapkins to actually split his pushes up into both lanes. And that means that he can't build up as big of a graveyard push. So, graveyard comes in nevertheless. And you can see here, NATO turn NATO's the mini tanks out of range of the tower to ensure that the, the arena tower and the king tower uh, will be able to take those skeletons down. Ice was down, and wow, he took he straight up just took zero damage that entire push. Now again, just archers down, mortar down once again maintaining the high pressure and preventing the opponent from going in with the graveyards 20 seconds left this is actually a pretty smart play he nados that baby dragon in so there won't be a mini tank for a graveyard counter push nevertheless though 13 seconds left and aaron decides to go in with the rocket with the very this, that was a very successful graveyard defense he has the elixir advantage and he decides to spend that six elixir on about 500 or so damage and um again just rinse and repeat he's going in with these mortars forcing the opponents on the defensive end and um yeah at this point it's just kind of a rinse and repeat he's about 400 damage ahead the opponent's got a graveyard push coming in he tried to nade the mini tanks out of the way but it didn't exactly work nevertheless he does bridge block as well with the knight you can see the baby dragon has not crossed the bridge yet meaning that the graveyard had no tank and simply did no damage so mortar comes down again uh again an ice wizard is forced out here he nados the ice wizard in to try and get a mortar hit but the bar barrel just barely takes it out unfortunately but as you can see you know lopkins has not been able to get a very successful graveyard push in uh, but that being said as we head towards triple elixir time this is just going to get all that much more difficult so now you can see an actual graveyard push is coming in um you know aaron tried to predict that graveyard with a night block but it didn't work so um he had to go ahead and uh actually rocket that out of the way i believe that nato was a misplay um because i don't think you would spend nine elixir like that but nevertheless you can see because of that misplay 
this graveyard's actually gonna uh, get quite a bit of damage onto his tower, and boom, just like that, we're tied. We're tied. You can see that, you know, Lockkin's got a tank across the bridge with a graveyard, and that just straight up did, you know, a thousand damage onto his tower. So this is very, very dangerous against Splashyard. You really want to make sure that the opponent simply does not have a tank for the graveyard. And look at this on the left lane. Aaron just got a mortal lock onto the tower simply because the opponent was so focused on getting those offensive pushes in. Once again, rocketing out the mini tank, making sure that the graveyard has no tank. And with the archers as well as the two towers, there's just simply no way that we're getting uh, that the graveyard player is going to get any sort of damage on the tower. Rocket comes in on the left tower and a very, very comfortable victory against the splash yard matchup. All right, this next match is going to be against none other than Pompeo, who is honestly one of the greatest ladder players of all time and hey he's obviously going to be playing his own pompeo balloon deck now normally this is uh, most balloon matchups are relatively good um you know of course you have the rocket for the balloon and you have the tornado to pull that balloon wherever you want but if the balloon player knows what they're doing these matchups can be surprisingly difficult and the reason for that is because they can get chip damage with their minor and if they play defense perfectly you're gonna have to be using your rockets on defense all the time and you simply will not have a chance to actually spell cycle so starting off here we do get a nice two mortar hits or so onto the opponent's tower which is definitely a start that we will take and uh, what pompeo is going to try and do is to force out the rocket and as soon as that rocket gets forced out then you know that we're in trouble so if you're playing the mortar cycle side well then your goal is to not use your rocket and save the rocket for the balloon every single time so of course minor comes into the archer uh we expected that so we're gonna go ahead and get a king tower activation with that and then we're just going to pull the inferno dragon away that doesn't work well the balloon's coming in so let's just go ahead and rocket the balloon out of here we got a little bit lucky there and uh, we will take balloon death damage, but hey, we're still about tied in terms of damage, so things are still looking relatively okay here. And at this point, Pompeo is going to go in with a goblin cage here in the center. And it's just so difficult for us to break through because if we play a mortar on offense, well, not only will we have a ton of mini tanks to distract the mortar, but it's also going to ensure that our mortar is going to be out of cycle when he goes in with an offensive balloon. So it's just kind of a, a very difficult back and forth decision that you are going to have to make. So here, Aaron, he decides to go in with a mortar on offense. It does get a mortar lock onto the tower. And this is very important. You got to make sure if you do play a mortar on offense, that you're going to have time to cycle back to another mortar before the opponent can play a balloon push. And here you can see Aaron is back to his mortar, which is exactly what he wants. And uh, now with the balloon there, Aaron can just very, very comfortably play a mortar on defense. Actually, he's going to go ahead and play it on offense, kind of. Um... One very, very important play that you can make with Mortar is to play defense with offense because simply the Mortar has a blind range. And so if you play it at the bridge, it'll pull a lot of the opponent's units, but also threaten to get damage on the opponent's tower. So with 10 seconds left here, we're doing relatively well. And we decide to actually cycle a rocket onto the opponent's tower. And uh, yeah, this is when the game becomes very, very risky because we only have a few counters to the balloon and we're going to use like one of our most important counters so of course now that we are trying to get uh, chip damage on the opponent's tower our main counter to the balloon is going to be the mortar as well as the tornado in combination so here as you can see we're just going to go ahead and quickly cheaply take out the miner we don't we're not really going to worry that the miner gets a couple of you know chip shots onto the tower because we're investing that saved elixir into a rocket that's going to deal a consistent 500 or so damage and uh, now that the tower is within two rocket range um, all we gotta do is focus up on this defense. Can we defend this push without using a rocket? And the answer, well, the answer is gonna be yes. We can just nato that balloon to the opposite lane here. The opponent actually does a very, very good job here. Um, I mean, he pulls all the mini tanks backwards. And a look at that. That mega minion gets two swings onto the tower, takes it down to 777. We nato the balloon to the opposite lane. And just like that, Pompeo is in the lead by 500 HP but he just simply does not have the spell power. Mortar comes down, we catch this miner, of course we catch it with a knight because if we caught it with the skeletons, then Pompeo would just zap those skeletons out. 
We NATO that balloon to the opposite lane, and we send the rocket just barely in time with 67 HP to spare. So you can see that even though this matchup was like on paper completely in our favor, Pompeo was able to make it so, so close. Alrighty, next up, we are going to be against an ice bow played by Michifu. Now, uh, Expo is generally going to be a decent matchup if you're facing the 2.9 Expo variation. But when you're facing the Ice Bow variation, this becomes very, very difficult. The reason for this is because, well, first off, getting a Mortal Lock on the tower is going to be very, very difficult simply because, again, the opponent just has so much to distract the mortar. But secondly, if you're playing against a 2.9 Expo cycle deck, well then, you know, you have more spell power than your opponent. You know, you have Rocket, you have Log, you have Tornado, while the opponent only has the Fireball and the Log. However, it, when you're against an Ice Bow player, well, you have the exact same in terms of spell power, um, but you actually have to use the Rocket on the Expo occasionally, which means that the opponent will sometimes be able to spell cycle faster than you. So. Anyways, focusing up on what's going on in the match, you can see Aaron did successfully defend an initial expo push there, going in with a mortar um, directly in front, followed up by a knight and some archers. I'm not, that's actually quite an unorthodox defense. I don't normally defend against expo like that, but hey, you know what? He's better than me, so, you know, maybe that's what I should start doing. Um, anyways, here he logs, once again gets chip damage. He's probably just gonna go, yeah, archers and then rocket out this expo. It's very important uh, that in single elixir time, you're mostly just going to be spending your rockets on the expos. Um, nothing much else you can say here. You simply don't have the elixir to be able to rocket cycle yet. Um, and that's mostly what you're going to be doing in double and triple elixir time is you're going to try and shift from rocketing out the expos to rocketing on the opponent's tower while, uh, you know, trying to defend the expos um, with whatever you can. So mortar here gets, you know, just tesla it out by the opponent, and now the opponent is going to begin the rocket cycle. And, um, you know, as Aaron, well, he's going to also, he's also going to rocket as well on the opponent's tower. Expo comes down, gets predicted by Aaron, actually, so very, very well played. And you can see here the opponent just log nados out the, uh, the archers. Not only is that going to get chip damage on the tower, but it just straight up takes out the archers. Luckily, though, um, I think, yeah, we actually take down that expo here, and um, unfortunately, Mortar will not get a lock onto the tower, but um, we're still relatively tied in terms of damage, so the match is still very, very difficult. Um, he tries to take down this Tesla here, but uh, it doesn't work out that well. I mean, I guess it, it works out okay, but um, yeah, again, Rocket comes down from Mitchfu. Aaron's going to respawn as well with a Rocket onto the tower, and... Once again, of course, Michifu is going to try and save up and build up an Expo push while that rocket is out of cycle. So seven seconds left. Um, of course, Michifu back to the Expo. Unfortunately, some archers, um, he tried to predict the Expo there, but they just get spell damaged out. A rocket comes down, but Michifu actually goes in with a mortar. Not Michifu. Aaron actually goes in with a mortar as well as a rocket onto the tower. And um, yeah, 1505 versus... Four, oh, well, now we have the lead here. This 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 match is just so, so close. It's just, it's all about getting chip damage on the tower with spells. And Aaron gets the gets the mortar lock onto the tower. That brings the tower down to two rockets. Um, and as you can see, Michifu is just barely going to be out of range for his spells. I believe NATO rocket log does like 705 or something like that. 781 is just barely out of range he tries to you know predictive nato to get an expo lock but it's little too late the rocket comes in and we take down an expo cycle deck Alrighty, this next matchup here is going to be against a classic bridge spam deck which is very very popular on ladder and i mean this is top ladder, so these guys know what they're doing. So starting off, the opponent is very very aggressive he straight up goes in with a battle ram to stop a uh, an ice spirit and he goes in with bandit and minions as well uh and look at this it's just going to be so difficult for the uh, for aaron to stop here uh, as you can see that knight gets completely obliterated and he has to go to ice spirit and a set of archers just to prevent damage from getting onto the tower so not a good start whatsoever and the opponent is not going to let up whatsoever he goes in with a roll goes out the bridge he goes in with a battle ram and he goes in with a i think a bandit as well and just look at this offensive pressure the opponent is already able to build up luckily though we have have some very very cheap cycle units we get to another knight 
and uh, we have to NATO out these minions as well. Uh, NATO and Ice Spirit is going to be successful um, in actually defending this push. But I mean, you can see that these <laughs> these British Man players are just of a different caliber. The amount of pressure that they can build up very, very quickly is absolutely insane. And Aaron is going to have to defend these pushes again and again throughout this match so i believe here and yeah he goes in with a mortar on offense as well as some archers to try and damage down this electro wizard archers and log followed up by a mortar hit disintegrates that wizard and it allows the mortar to get okay well it doesn't allow the mortar to get any hits because the opponent goes in with a bandit uh, which we do uh stop with a skeletons and ice spirit combination but the opponent non-stop going to be going in with a um a battle ram here that is a bit of a mistake though because aaron's just going to respond with a four elixir counter and it's also going to allow one mortar hit to land on the opponent's tower now archers go in as a cycle card but also to stop that barbarian and uh, with 60 seconds left well the opponent is going to begin building up a much bigger push for Aaron to defend so and we're, he's going to get some chip damage here with the archers and the ice spirit here but Aaron is going to be building uh is going to have to really really just defend this huge push that the opponent is about to about to give here so as you can see uh he's gonna fireball out the archers here of course we're gonna native that pekka to the mortar and the mortar is very very important in defending these bridge band pushes because uh simply because battle ram okay you cannot let that battle ram connect onto the tower and you simply need a building to distract that battle ram and playing that mortar in the center is very very important you have to make sure that the mortar actually survives and that the battle ram actually connects and you know spawns those barbarians so here we do get a king tower activation five seconds left again a mortar in the center very very important that that battle ram pops um as you can see mortar takes down the ewiz and now we just use the activated king's tower to defend this push relatively easily and now as you can see as the battlefield clears aaron is able to just you know consistently almost flawlessly defend these pushes and he's up by over a thousand hp so I mean, and, and and he just gets a mortal lock onto the tower. Look at this. And uh, as you can see, the opponent's going to kind of go all in and just let that mortar do its thing. Eh, just kidding. Aaron's got another mortar on defense. And he's not only going to just play it on defense, he's going to play it on offense too. And you can see here the opponent spamming at the bridge. He, Aaron, very, very smart, takes down that E-Wiz first. And um, yeah, with that E-Wiz out of the way, this push simply is not getting anywhere. A bar bear, uh, a battle ram comes down once again, but it gets pulled with another mortar. And as we head towards the last minute of this match, we are... We're, we're 2,000 damage ahead. I mean, <laughs> we are ahead by 2,000 HP. And uh, you can see here, by utilizing the defensive capabilities of the mortar and uh, making sure that that battle ram pops into those barbarians, we're pretty much able to stop any sort of push the opponent has. So here, very smart play. He goes in with an Ice Spirit and a Tornado to clear out the minions, making sure the Ice Spirit connects onto everything. Um, we go in here at the... Um, let's see. Oh my god, I don't even know what to say. There's just so much going on here. Um, 35 seconds left. Of course, we're going to log all this stuff back. And some Skeletons and some Ice Spirits. And I mean, I don't even know. Somehow, Aaron literally takes zero damage that entire push. And with 25 seconds left, well, it's pretty much game over at this point, right? I mean, I mean, we're just gonna simply defend this P.E.K.K.A. here um, and the battle ram in the left lane. And with 15 seconds left, I mean, what can I say? What can I say? Defensive mortar comes down. Battle ram's not gonna connect on the tower. We need her to clear out the minions and just absolute dominance here, just dismantling a P.E.K.K.A. bridge band matchup. So there we go guys, a few games that brought Aaron up to 82 28 trophies, which at the time was top 32 in the entire world. Huge props to Aaron for this amazing achievement. Go ahead and show Aaron some support. Links to his channel are going to be down in the description. But unfortunately guys, that's all I got time for in today's episode. Huge thanks to all of my channel members. You guys are the absolute G's. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legend Array, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.